everybody, and welcome to day two of the Business Application Summit and Theater uh, two. two. Yep. yep. Theater two. Uh, we're going to be talking about the power of platform, and we're going to do it around the bubble of a cash flow statement. So uh, you get ready to see something fast and furious. So what you're going to see today is two passionate MVPs, Mr. Mariano Gomez, Thank um, you. Biz App MVP, and myself, Belinda Allen, a data platform MVP. And we love the Power Platform. We're going to be looking at the uh, cash flow statement inside of Power BI, that operational financials and cash flow in BI is a soapbox of mine. So I convinced Mariano to step up on it with me. Um, and let's see, my little clicker is not wanting to click, click, click. Uh, we're also going to be doing it uh, in taking this information and using Microsoft Flow and Power Apps inside of it. And we're going to do it all in PowerPoint so we're not dependent on the internet so we can get through it all today. And the good news for you is you could go to the site and download the entire demo so you don't have to worry about taking some notes. I do have a little bit of DAC stuff. So I just want to step back and talk about the cash flow statement for a minute since it's our foundation. This is the traditional format of the cash flow statement. I think it's horrendous. I hate it. I've been implementing accounting systems for 28 years. Um, Mariana's pretty close. 20, to 21. Yep. And it's always basically the same format, and I think it's utterly worthless. So I just usually tell people, tell me what you want, and I'll build it for you. And I think, I really do. I think it's just absolutely horrible. So I stopped and said, okay, what are we trying to achieve with a cash flow statement? We want to see where the money is coming from. Is it coming from revenue? Is it coming from loans? Is it coming from stock sales? Where do we spend the money? And how is our cash changing over the course of a period or years? Basically, are we thriving or are we in poor cash flow? And the cash flow, just in case you're wondering, was invented in 1863 by an iron company who realized, hey, on the books we're making money, but I don't have any money to pay my bills. So. Enter in Belinda's vision of operational cash flow statements. You'll never get rid of the other format. Banks will want that, but from an operational uh, point of view, this is what you're going to want to see. Um, I put this in the slide deck. This is my one of my favorite visuals to use for cash flow, so you can just go and download it. Um, I also put in my DAX code in the slide deck to get a date table. Uh, so you could get access to that. I strongly encourage you if you want to do any kind of operational stuff, uh, financial type work in Power BI, you attend a DAC session while you're here. I'm going to skip all of that. All right, so <clears throat> that visual that I just pointed out, I've put it into a Power BI report, and it's the calendar visual. In the blue, I've added in the date field. In the yellow, I've added in something called net debit. I always do net debit and net credit. Net debit is debit minus credits, and net credit is credit minus debits. That way, if I want to show sales and I show net credit, the shells are so positive, if they're really positive. That's a Belinda thing. And then I narrow it down to just cash, and now I can see all of my cash right in there. And then I go through and format it. I like to format all the text to be a bigger font. And then I'll go through, and um, there's a little 14 font there. And then I'll go into the data colors and make them um, diverging and set the colors for the high and the low cash. And now, visually, I can see what my cash is doing. And this is the whole start of where Power Platform really brings some value into our cash flow statement. This is really powerful. Now, this is looking in the past, not looking forward, but it's a pretty cool tool to use. All right, so I also put a filter on it. I'm not going to get much more into the filter. Let's see. There we go. I put in the period date, and voila, there's the whole statement. An idea, if you want to look forward, you might want to go through and add your payables and your receivables. If you add your receivables into it, I would take off like 5% for write-offs, and uh, then you could look at your cash going forward as well. The next one I want to show you, um, I, here's a DAX column I created that evaluates, is this the last 30 days or not? And then I can put it in a filter. And then I have, or you could do it this way, where you're looking, creating a DAX measure for each debit and credit amount. Again, you could download these slides and get those, that DAX code. And this was something that I was in business with my husband for 20 plus years, almost 30 years, and I got tired of hearing him say, where does the cash go, where does the cash go, where does the cash go? So I built this report where I'm looking at, um, these are all the debit transactions in my system, so for the bank account, 
and who it was paid to and who it was received from. And then I do the same with all the credits. So he's basically looking at general ledger information, but he's looking at it with who is paid to, who it was paid from. And I usually, this one I did in the last 30 days, and in this sample I just did it based on the transaction date. But normally I will do this based on the date it was entered in the system. And then that way nothing gets by. Nobody could go in and date something 31 days ago and it missed the report. But now we can literally see where the cash is coming from and where the cash is going. Um, so I love this. This is one of my favorite things, um, my favorite reports. Another uh, DAX measure you could do, this is done off of a quick measure, is to, this is why you need a date field, so you could do year-to-date numbers. So here is my year-to-date credit, and I could do the same for debit, and I did those off of net debit and net credit, so I get the balance. And in this one, I just add in a filter for the year off my table, and then I'm going to come in and add in, let's see, keep going, Belinda, add in just a little clustered bar chart. And in this, I'm going to populate the month name from my date table and the net debit value. And then I'm going to go through and tell it just to look at cash. Now, as I do this, I'll do the same thing with net debit for my AR. And then I'll do the same thing for my sales, but this time with net credit. And then I'll do the same thing for AP with credit again. And then this time, assuming it's a distribution company, I'll grab my inventory accounts off the balance sheet and my cost of goods sold and put those together and then I do one for my net profit and in this one I did it a little bit different I took my main segment and calculated what are my net profit fields now the reason why I did all this is you end up with a report that looks like this this is you could call this a financial statement or you could call it a, a, a true cash flow because in this particular case I'm looking at my cash in April I compare it to my sales in April cash went way down sales went way up AR went up a little bit, AP went way down, so it looks like I paid a lot of bills in AP, but I didn't buy a lot of inventory, so I probably want to go and investigate what the heck happened, what did I buy in April, or what did I pay in April? So it's a great way to get some relational, just by visuals and watching the visuals. And this is really beneficial when you do the net debit, net credits, because now when my cash is going up, it's going to the right, not to the left. All right, so don't forget the power of the card, putting your cash balance in the card. That's incredibly powerful. Um, I also use that year-to-date uh, visual or DAX formula I created here. I've got my bank balance for every single month, for every single year. And then I'm going to go through and just populate that on a clustered column chart as well so I can look at it by year. And also an incredible form to use when you're looking at cash as the water flow. So now that I've got all this in and it's looking really good, I want to go through, oh, I skipped something I want to talk about now. Um, I could go through and publish this to the, um, to the service, the Power BI service. Don't forget when you're looking at cash, you need to evaluate uh, or be able to determine or distinguish beginning balances or not. So sometimes if you want to look at year-to-date numbers, you need the beginning balance, but if you want to look at net change, you want to be able to exclude the beginning balance number. So don't forget that. That's important. All right. So now that I've got all that and I publish it to the web, I want the service to tell me when my cash changes either to a certain dollar amount or drops or by a percent. And you can do notifications in Power BI off cards, tiles, and gauges. Another reason to take advantage of using that card. So I went in and created an alert in my Power BI, it said let's manage the alerts, and I'm going to add a rule, and the rule is if it goes below $25,000, I want it to not only notify me in the service, but send me an email. So I get the notification in the service that looks like this, or it could send me an email. But Mr. Gomez, I noticed when I was setting that up that it says, um, Microsoft Flow. Use a Microsoft used. Flow, yeah. And would you click it again? Absolutely. So I clicked it and I got this. And this is Flow. So how can I take my notification in Power BI and extend it to the CFO, the controller, or somebody else? So you guys already saw the power of the Power Platform just from a Power BI standpoint. What if I told you now you could extend this beyond using Microsoft Flow and even Power Apps? So let's take it from there. So with the new trigger 
the new flow trigger, you can now set up an alert based on all those parameters that you saw, uh, based on those, those reports that you created. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit continue here. We're going to actually have this uh, beautiful template that we're going to use for um, setting up our alert. And um, here comes the, the new flow template. So if you go to us.flow.microsoft.com, uh, US you can then now basically, with that trigger, as a, with that Power BI trigger, set up a new notification and a new alert that you can probably send out to your finance team based on some change in or condition on that report. So in this case, I've actually taken the alert from uh, the checkbook balance that Belinda just created. And I'm going to just go ahead and set up a, an action, a custom action. In this case, my custom action will be based on the Office 365 Outlook, right? We're then going to make sure we can send out an email to somebody. And that particular email is going to go to our finance team when uh, a change in the cash flow condition occurs. In this particular case, we're going to set up the alert ID. We're going to send it to Belinda, assuming she's our CFO. And uh, we're just going to set up a notification that says cash is low. All right? As you can see, you also have uh, an exposed to you are all the, um, the dynamic content that comes from Power, Power BI. So you want to take those into account if you want to add more notifications to your, to your, um, to your alert. So con we can add more actions. Those actions, in this case, I might want to send a notification or so on. So anyways, back to Power BI, I'm going to do something even more interesting. With the, um, with the ability now to actually publish these reports as dashboards, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pin this particular cash change calendar onto, um, onto a new dashboard. In this case, I'm going to set up this dashboard. I'm going to call it cash change calendar. And um, once I pin it, now that becomes a part of the dashboard list that is there. Why do I want to do this? Because I'm cool enough, and our executives actually have a, um, a Power BI, I'm sorry, a Power Apps application that uh, they've been actually using to track cash positions in various accounts that we have. Also, they monitor the top five customers that we have by sales and um, have a little display of customers con con customer concentration by territory. Now, I've been char in charge with um, basically modernizing this our particular application to embed some Power BI coolness into it. So what I want to do is uh, basically front and center, they asked me to uh, you know, change the customer by territory display and include our cash flow calendar that we just created in Power BI. With that said, I basically removed that particular um, control from there, from the, from the application itself. And now I'm going to use, in the, from the list of controls, I'm going to go to the Power BI tile and basically insert that particular Power BI control into my Power Apps. Now, here's the coolness. Once I've select that, the next thing I got to do is just choose my workspace. So assuming I publish to my workspace, I'm going to select that from the, uh, from the drop down, uh, the, the data connection drop down. And then I'm going to actually select now the dashboard that it, that it was created from. Once I select the dashboard, now I got to select the tile. So once the, with the tile selected, boom, the cash flow calendar now appears on my... Um, this is where you go, ooh. Yeah, this is where you go, ooh, because this shows the actual deep integration that exists across the Power Platform as a whole. So now I can't really leave that particular control there, so we, we're going to move it out of the way, resize it, make sure it's, uh, it's now available for display. And um, that basically concludes our presentation for today. We want you guys to take this with you, download our slide deck, download um, the samples that we have, and make sure that you put this to practice because it's super cool for you. We have five minutes for questions.